Hey, everybody, this is Heidi St. John. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm glad you guys have joined me. We are going to have a jam-packed podcast today talking about one of my favorite topics, comprehensive sex education and what it is doing to the hearts and minds of our children in public schools across this nation and around the world. Today, I have in studio with me Mark and Amber Archer from fearlessspeechers.org, and we're going to jump right into this topic. Stick around. I think you're going to be encouraged. Sexual predators and comprehensive sex education both break down inhibitions. That's what they start with. They also gain trust with the child and then slowly start to get them towards sexual activity. Anything goes. Um, You are teaching uh, children uh, adult child sex. You're teaching transgender issues. Um, And, you know, children are are moldable and, and influenced by that. They said, okay, now we need you and your team to be able to explain what homosexuality is to a four-year-old student. To introduce this kind of material at that age, frankly, it's child abuse. You're gonna teach our children that it's okay for any two children of any age, of any sex, to have sexual intercourse with each other as long as two components are present, one's using a condom and they both give consent. Did I hear that correctly? It's not a neutral venue. There's no such thing, okay? The schools are doing your job. They are discipling your children, but they're not discipling them in the faith of Jesus Christ. It's only the exceptional child that even survives that system. Most do not survive, most have not survived. They believe that children are sexual from birth and that they deserve and have the right to be sexually active and to seek sexual pleasure. And if anyone is stopping them from that, then you are judging and oppressing them. Even kindergarten now, they're wanting to teach them more and more perverse information and acts and put that into the children's minds. And once those that, that poison is in a child's mind, it doesn't leave. They'll always remember what they learned. And it's by design, it's orchestrated. In my humble opinion, it will be worse before it gets better. All right, you guys. So we are making our way through the month of April. And as you guys know, I am a head deep right now in I'm um, up to my eyeballs, actually running for Congress in the great state of Washington. And one of the things that I have absolutely loved about running for Congress and running to represent the good people of Washington state is getting to meet people who are off the bench and onto the battlefield. Uh, I've been all over Washington state and around the country, as you guys know, for years and years, talking to people who are willing to engage Uh, in the fight for the hearts and minds of our children. And that's exactly what is going on right now. Our children are being injured. And as I said before, I believe it is irreparable harm in many cases, because by the time parents figure out what's going on with their kids, their minds have already been warped. Uh, The Bible teaches us that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And uh, as you guys just heard a moment ago, uh, the, the soundtrack that we just played for you is the trailer from a brand new feature length documentary called The Mind Polluters that has come out from Mark and Amber Archer. And I am thrilled today to have them on the show. We're going to tear it up. Hey, you guys, welcome to the podcast. (laughs) Hey, Heidi, thanks for having us. I'm glad you're here. It just encourages me to see parents who are willing to, uh, to throw it all out on the line and leave it all on the field to protect the hearts and minds of our kids. And that's what you guys are doing. So I want to jump right into this. Before I do, I always always ask uh, guests to introduce themselves to our audience. You guys are on video and audio, obviously. Hopefully, YouTube won't take this video down. (laughs) We'll see. We'll see, uh, especially since you guys have been banned by Amazon. There's a good chance uh, YouTube will take it down. But you, you jumped into this fight, I would assume, largely because you're parents, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so we, you guys we, live in Indiana. Tell us a little bit about yourselves yeah. and your family. 
All right. So we started a, um, a filmmaking ministry in 2017. And first we were just telling people's uh, personal testimonies of coming to faith in Christ because we thought there's so many people who, you know, either won't go into a church and or they have this misconception of the people who are in the churches. And so we thought, you know, what better way than to start sharing people's testimonies and stories? We all have a past. We all have a story. And and it, it was just a great way. And we saw great um great feedback from those when we were producing those. We did two. And then uh, Mark and I get up super early and we read and we pray together and always looking, you know, for the Lord for next steps. And one morning I just looked at him and I said, you know, I think we're supposed to be doing movies. Mm. And cause that's his background. That's what he's been in. And when I met him, he was on the tail end of it and walked away from filmmaking and, you know, sold all of his gear. So I never really saw my husband um, in his prime, if you will, you know, yeah. in his earlier his- days. Yeah, and his filmmaking you know, element. Yeah, I mean, he, he goes on to win Sundance when he's young in his 20s, and, you know, just and making all these awesome movies. And I thought, well, I want to see my husband make movies. <laughs> Little did I know that, hello, you have to be a part of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have been drafted. <laughs> so, so, so we started our filmmaking ministry in 2017. And the first film we did was In Would Drive. It was about the abortionist uh, here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And um, he had three clinics here in Indiana. And um, so we started making a a documentary about how he was shut down because I thought, you know, it doesn't take the Supreme Court. It doesn't take the presidency. It's the local grassroots who are making all the difference. And they sure did. I mean, it was a seven year battle, but they were able to get him shut down uh, all across the state of Indiana, uh, plus an additional one here in Indiana. But we got the film done. And, you know, it was one of those things where starting this ministry and we're like, are we really supposed to be doing this? There were so many things along the way that the Lord provided. I mean, absolutely. We're like, yes, we are supposed to be doing this, but it was interesting because we got the film done the first time and we showed it to our donors and uh, the abortionist who we interviewed, he speaks for himself in the film. Um, He dies. And then two weeks later, they find over 2000 fetal remains at his home in Illinois. Who was was this this guys now? Who was this? No, this is Klopfer. George Klopfer. Uh, and um, so, and then they found some more. So fi- we went back into production and uh, it, it was six months before they actually buried the baby. So, uh, mm-hmm. we, and we went in to include that into the story. And so uh, we released that film during the pandemic it, uh, to Amazon. And um, we were just praying about next steps. We're like, Lord, you know, where are we going? What are we doing? And we knew that it was going to be something on pornography. We didn't know what, but we were watching an episode uh, on Glenn Beck as global grooming. I think it was. And he had uh, Rebecca Friedrichs on and Mm. she was sharing about Mm -hmm. what was happening in her schools and, you know, being a former teacher. And we're like, no way, like no way this is happening. she was really exposing the NEA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. really. And, and, so, so we, I shared, I, I reposted that onto my uh, personal social media page and one of our state representatives here, she messaged me and she's like, oh, hey, Amber, there's a sexual revolution conference happening up here in Napanee. You and Mark should consider coming. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> so, so we did, we went and oh my goodness, we couldn't believe the things that we learned. And so we immediately started investigating and researching and saying, you know, just dispelling the myth that this isn't, ha- this isn't happening, you know, mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. looking at it as, because so many people that we would run into and talk to, they're like, Oh no, that's not really happening. <laughs> uh, no, really it is happening. <laughs> I, I, well, I told you guys before we started recording today, I'm so sick of hearing parents, say, parents say that. I'm so sick and tired of hearing people say, oh, I live in a conservative district in Washington Mm -hmm. state, or I live in a conservative school district in Indiana. Well, I'm sorry. It doesn't conservative and liberal that we're way beyond that. This is good versus evil. And it's in your little conservative district. And if you don't know it, shame on you at this point. Open your eyes, wake up. And I think, and I think that's the thing, especially with the movie, with the mind polluters, it's really waking people up. And we get that feedback from all across the country of everyone who's screening it is this has helped so many people understand what to look for. And to, I mean, because we show them exactly from the advocates for youth, everybody who's, you know, the ones who are pushing the three R's and, you know, just this is what, these are what your kids are watching at school. 
Right, right. So I want to. So I want to back up. So you guys did uh, in Wood Drive. Yeah. Incredible. Just exposing really the underbelly of the abortion industry as if there is if there's anything but an underbelly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're, exactly. we're, 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 we're talking about the murder of the most yeah. innocent, the most the, the most vulnerable among us. And it's not just the murder. It is the brutal dismemberment, the poisoning uh, and what this and, and the, the aftermath that it leaves in the hearts of mothers who have somehow been convinced to murder their own children. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is it is evil from sun up to sundown. And uh, conference sex, sex, sex education is also evil from sun up oh, it feeds to sundown. right into it. I, yeah. I mean, you know, you yeah. have comprehensive sex ed because it feeds the abortion industry. I, yeah. it, it's just it's absolutely so true. Corrupting. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. absolutely true. And I guess I want to jump into this because you guys, this this film that you put out called The Mind Polluters uh, is really calling these guys out and you're not pulling mm-hmm. any punches. And I think this is what is so uh, is so important. Several years ago, I showed a short documentary here at the homeschool resource center i invited parents and grandparents to come from all over the county and we had about 400 people show up and i showed them a a short documentary about what is happening in our schools with regard to comprehensive sex education and there were points in that film that my husband and i you know jay said to me i don't even know if we could play this because it's going to offend people i'm like oh no play it play the whole Mm -hmm. thing because if people don't if they're if we're unwilling to see with our own eyes what our children are being subjected to day after day after day, yeah. then we're never going to understand the gravity of the situation. And it is, uh, it is dire. And I know Mark for, as a dad, right. You're mm-hmm. have, you, you must be looking at this going, this is the next generation mm-hmm. and we're going to have to stop it. So how did you guys begin to do your homework on the mind polluters? Cause you've got some of my favorite people there. Uh, my dear <laughs> friend, Ken Ham on it. I've had Alex yeah. Newman on my show several times. We've been talking about this for a long time. So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about the process and how you guys determined who you're going to have speaking into this uh, this topic. You know, when you do investigative documentary work, you you're just start pulling on the threads and see where the Lord leads. And mm-hmm. so it started with um, Rhonda Miller, who had organized the conference that we went to and she's in the film she's with purple for parents of indiana and she had been working with um dr judith reisman who's also in the film now judith was the pioneer in researching kinsey and everything that he was really about and judith sent me oh two or three hundred pages worth of papers that judith had written about kinsey in particular and so well, and wasn't it Kinsey weekend. who believed that children are sexual from birth? Like yes. it, yep. he was the guy who pioneered this. So your little tiny six month old baby has a sexual response. And not only do they believe this, they experimented on these kids, which is horrifying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In and of oh and we show yeah. it in the film. We show we show all of it, parts of his research in the film so people can see it for themselves. And that's the thing. Yeah. Showing people so they can see it for themselves. Oh, but yeah, this isn't so. happening. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, but you know, we found we found some gems, you know, so we. Oh. The, the best part about what we learned with doing uh, doing Inwood Drive, backing up to that, as it relates to doing a film like The Mind Polluters, when we did Inwood Drive and we told people that we were going to go in and in, interview George Klopfer. The abortionist. The abortionist. And people said, why are you even, even letting him speak? And mm-hmm. I said, I pushed back on him. I said, no, 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 no. Trust me, the more you let him speak, the worse it's going to get. I'm going to let him speak everything he wants to say. And that's exactly what happens in the mind polluters is we all we're all we are is the guides and everything that you see is straight out of these textbooks. It's straight from the horse's mouth. And in relation to Alfred Kinsey, there we have a segment from Judith on the Phil Donahue show back in the early 90s. And she's on there with C.A. Tripp, who was Kinsey's photographer. And she calls him out. It, it shows in the book how they were um, torturing and molesting babies. Mm-hmm. And C.A. Tripp is sitting there and he says, he says, no, we weren't torturing them. And she says, you had pedophiles experimenting on children. And, and he admits to it. He says, mm-hmm. well, he... He yes, he used pedophiles, but they were specially trained pedophiles. They used stopwatches right. and 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 he admits to it on national television, and yeah. that's one of the first moments in the film where you hear an audible gasp 
mm-hmm. yep. from people yep. in the audience. Well, it makes because, it makes you sick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's where and that's where and that's where comprehensive sex ed comes from. The whole foundation of comprehensive sex ed is that we have sexual rights and we're sexual from birth. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Well, as you uh, dive into this, and I think part of the reason why parents have been so reticent to even talk about it is because it makes you uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to talk about uh, Kinsey molesting little babies, but that's exactly what he did. Nobody yeah. wants to talk about the fact that they're pushing this ideology on children as young as four years old in our public school systems. And that, but that's exactly what happens. And that's what we need. That's why we need to be talking about it. When you were doing this, I'm, I'm imagining that there are moments for you that were pretty difficult. Oh, when you, oh, many, yeah, especially, yeah. especially, you know, we have a home office. So, and we have three, three young girls. And so there were so many times that we just had to turn it off. I mean, we, mm-hmm. we couldn't even, we couldn't even have some of the books and things out. They're just so graphic and horrific. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I had to start editing with headphones on um, just so that they wouldn't hear <laughs> some of the language. And mm-hmm. uh, But there there came a point several times where I just had to turn it off and say, I can't work on this because little eyes are behind me and I don't want them being exposed to this. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and you have. So the, the point of this really is you're you're talking not only about comprehensive sex education, but also about the transgender movement. We are just seeing, I mean, I was actually in, you guys don't know this, but I was in um, Indianapolis. It's probably been five years ago now. And I was keynoting for an event there. And I held up the cover of a of Time magazine with a black man on the front dressed as a woman. And the, and the cover of the magazine called it the transgender tipping point. And as I was, uh, it's just, this is a black man dressed mm-hmm. as a woman he identifies as a woman, probably identifies as a white woman for all we know. But anyway, so uh, here's this dude who identifies as a woman. I hold up this this magazine in Indianapolis and uh, a woman from there's probably, I don't know, a couple thousand people in this room and a woman from about halfway back in the audience stands up in the middle of my talking. And if you guys have ever been to the fairgrounds there, you know what this room looked like. So mm-hmm. big giant stage, you know, so she comes storming to the stage, fist in the air and she's saying, give me your microphone, give me your microphone. Well, in all my years of speaking, of public speaking, and I've been doing this a long time, I have never had somebody yell and scream at me and demand the microphone. And I'll, I'll never forget this as long as I live because there was a spirit on this woman as I live and breathe. This is demonic. Uh, mm-hmm. It's 100% uh, the spirit of this age. This is Satan himself. And oh, yeah. injuring the hearts of, of our children and, and clouding the hearts of parents, right? And and confusing parents so they don't even know how to respond to this. And that's how this woman was. Mm-hmm. And she said, uh, she said, she just walked right up to me and said, I have something to say. And she's obviously very angry. I finally get her to calm down, sit in the front row. And I say, I'll talk to you when this is over in the green room. So they bring her back. And as sure as shooting, and I've heard this hundreds of times over the years, she said, my, my child is part of the Indianapolis Unified School District. And in kindergarten, they read a book to my son. And she mm-hmm. starts talking about this, ch- this children's book, this beautifully illustrated, you know, innocent sounding book that basically confused her son and let mm-hmm. him know in no uncertain terms that there could be a girl locked up inside of him that he doesn't mm-hmm. know is there. And sure enough, by the first grade, his best friend decided he was a girl. And now her son's in third grade and he thinks he's a girl because you're talking about little kids four and five years old, the Bible teaches us that when a student is fully trained, it'll be like his teacher. Mm -hmm. The left knows this, and this is why they're targeting children. And she said she'd had a dream. So in the wake of this, so this woman now is just pouring, you know, tears just streaming down her face. We're back behind the stage at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. And she is saying, listen, I had a dream. And in my dream, uh, God told me that this is how he's made this generation of children. And I said, that that's not God. God would never, God would never mm-hmm. come to you and, and deny who he is or deny his word. Mm-hmm. And she said, I just want to love my son. And I think that's what people need to understand, right? That these, these parents who are allowing this stuff to happen, it's blindness. It is, uh, it is a, an absolute unwillingness to see what's actually happening. It's denial of basic biology, which is why you see Leah Thomas winning women's, uh, women, mm-hmm. women's sports events. She's clearly not a woman, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yet we we lack courage. And Rob Bell said, and this is uh, this is where I'm going with this with you guys. Uh, Rob, not Rob Bell, for goodness sake. I never quote him unless I'm angry about something. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Rob McCoy was on my show a couple of weeks ago, and he said, uh, in the absence of courage, truth is an orphan. And we're going to take a quick break. And when mm-hmm. we come back, I want you guys to address the lack of courage in the culture. We'll be right back. 
All right, we're back with Mark and, I, and Amber Archer, and uh, we've been talking about their new film, The Mind Polluters. And right before the break, I was talking a little bit about a quote from my friend uh, Rob McCoy, who said, in the absence of courage, truth is an orphan. And we're mm-hmm. absolutely seeing that right now. Uh, Mark, I want to ask you, what what have you guys gotten any pushback on this? What Because it does take courage. You guys talk about this. I know we're laughing because he's like, what do you think? Uh, uh, before we came on, you guys told me that you've already been, your film's already been banned off of Amazon, right? Yep. yep. So let's, let's talk about that right now because, uh, Rob is right in the absence of courage. Truth is an orphan and you will mm-hmm. never be able to get the truth out there unless you're courageous right now. So tell, mm-hmm. uh, tell, uh, listeners a little bit about what this has been like for you guys. You know, the biggest thing that was the, the question that I kept asking from the start was, where are the men? So as you look at who's in this fight and the first several interviews that we did, they were all women. And it was it was Rhonda Miller and, and Jennifer McWilliams. And then it was Dr. Judith Reisman. And we kept looking around going, where are the men? What, mm-hmm. This is something that men should be standing up and fighting for. And we heard Alex Newman on your podcast and and uh, saw him on several other things and so we reached out to him and then we found um uh Craig Sawyer mm-hmm. who is an amazing guy to to listen to he's a former navy seal and he was so convicted by the problem of child sex trafficking that he got involved in and after retirement he started his own foundation called Veterans for Child Rescue and all they do is go and assist law enforcement in taking down these pedophile rings. And when t- talking to him, and we got to him through Judith Reisman, and in talking to him, the, what he was describing as the the tactics that that groomers use to lure children into sex trafficking is identical, identical to what comprehensive sex ed and social emotional learning do in the classroom. And so we said, well, we got to talk to Craig. And then we rounded it out with one of your favorites, Ken Ham, because he's, <laughs> we said, we have to have a pastor figure of some sort, somebody to bring the gospel mm-hmm. in this. And so if you can the, get one with an Australian accent, more is the better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And Ken, you know, when you interview him, you just put the quarter in and he goes. <laughs> I know. It's not, so true. <laughs> <laughs> he's, so, he's so good. And he just talks and he just says what needs to be said. Yeah. But he's fearless, right? So uh, the the biggest difficulty that we had was um was finding men in this in this mm-hmm. battle space who would stand up because everybody and the reason for this I'm convinced because I was a man who was compromised before the Lord cleaned me up. Mm-hmm. And so I understand what that looks like and I understand that these men are compromised because they're addicted to the porn. Yep. And they're living in that sin and they're comfortable with it. And mm-hmm. so they don't want to talk about it. And it's it's not just men outside the church. It's men in church leadership. Absolutely true. And that's why they mm-hmm. won't stand up. And so mm-hmm. it takes people, I guess it takes people like the prodigal son, like I was, <laughs> to stand up and say, the Lord set me free from that. I repented mm-hmm. of it. I saw it. I acknowledged it. Mm-hmm. I turned away from it. I'm. I was ashamed of that. But I'm not ashamed now because I can tell you what it looks like mm-hmm. and tell you, men, you need to repent. You have to lead, men. That's why the women are leading, because you're not, because, mm-hmm. you're, because you're compromised. So you need to start by coming to the cross and repenting. And that was, I, love that. I think, the biggest heartbreak for me as a man mm-hmm. was looking at that and saying, fine, then I, if nobody else is going to make this film, then I will. Yeah, whatever. Mm. <laughs> well, and you you touched on oh, there's so many things that you said here that just uh, kind of makes my heart sing because I'm often telling women I I spend a lot of time uh, reaching women out on the road and through my ministry for the last 15 years and I hear from women who have had abortions or their or their kids have walked away from the Lord or they their marriage ended in divorce or whatever it is and so they feel like well that's it for me you know i i don't have a testimony anymore my 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 testimony's been ruined you know whether it was an an addiction with alcohol or an addiction with pornography or whatever it was and i'm like boy who do you think can minister the most to the heart of a woman who has experienced the devastation of taking the life of her own child through abortion mm-hmm. 
It's it's not someone who's never been there. It's someone who's been there and got healed from it and can come yeah. back and say there's life on the other side. There's yeah. forgiveness. And not only is there forgiveness, God has a, a message that he wants you to share. And so uh, I love I love that, Mark, that you're that you're saying, listen, I was there. God's going to use it. He wants to use it. Yeah. And I think that is, you know, this is the message of the gospel, right? Yeah. That none of yeah. us are too far gone, that God has something he wants us to do. And Amber, as you're sitting here listening to your husband, which I think you just got to be so, so thrilled to be able to work, uh, work together side by side. It's, uh, <laughs> it's an amazing thing. You know, what doesn't kill you, make you stronger. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. So, uh, this is, you know, Jay and I've been working together for, oh my goodness, you know, a, a whole lot of years. And, uh, you guys are learning about this stuff together. I want to touch on something that Mark said and Amber kind of get mm-hmm. your, uh, feedback on this. You just touched briefly, Mark, on social emotional learning. I have been yelling and screaming about this for two years at, at my show. And I cannot tell you the number of people that write to me and say, Heidi, 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 Heidi. <laughs> you know, social emotional learning, it's not that big of a deal. They're just trying to teach our kids how to get along. And I'm like, no, no, no. They're grooming your children. They're categorizing your children. They're yep. making sure your children know that they fit into a specific category. Uh, tell us, uh, Amber, a little bit about SEL and why parents should be concerned, because this is in every school in America. Oh, it absolutely is. It, well, especially now because of the COVID. I mean, it, it, it's the, the great excuse to push this on to every child in America through the school system. Yeah. Because every child now, uh, through social emotional learning, your child is now labeled as a trauma victim. And so every child is now seen as they need help and uh, the schools are there to provide that help for your children. Well, thank goodness. Oh my goodness. Right. Thank Cause how did anybody survive before social emotional learning came along? I did not even and know. And they were teaching everybody how to become better adults. I mean, I think that's mm. the thing that just disgusts me the most is I think how did all of these generations ever survive because yeah. the schools weren't there to tell them how to think and feel about someone right. else. You know, Which is all they're all the, doing. That is SEL. They're yeah. teaching your kids oh, how to yes. think and how to feel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's, yeah. It's, all, Which, it's, it's not academics. It's therapeutic education now. Mm, therapeutic mm-hmm. education. Wow. And mm-hmm. they're also doing a whole lot of uh, data mining in the schools now. Oh, and I think parents yes. like, you, do you guys, did you touch on this at all in the film? Oh, yes. No? Alex is on. Alex Newman is in the film and he, he goes through all of the, the, I mean, we show Panorama. In the film for people who know about the surveys. So, I mean, we there's so much in the movie for people to um, learn from and understand what's happening. I mean, that's how the social emotional learning continues to uh, be so prevalent in the schools and keep gaining momentum because they're using these surveys now to ask the kids about their feelings, about their emotions. And like Alex says in the film, they then take that. And in order to shift the culture of the school, they have to bring in these people to uh, to teach the teachers how to teach these things better and be more inclusive and accepting. And, and so, yeah, I mean, garbage, absolutely go and watch the mind polluters and see the, the surveys. Yeah. <laughs> So let's let's touch on that really quick uh, in yeah. the in the last few minutes that we have. You guys, uh, I want to get back to the mind polluters, but before I do that, you're also in the beginning phases of another uh, investigative d- documentary, and you're going to tackle the issue of gender dysphoria. Correct? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. How's that going? <laughs> oh, Wait, yay. more 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 fun stuff for you. I mean, it's like <laughs> you're right. yeah, yeah. You're, you know what yeah. I picture you guys as? I just I just saw it. You guys are like. Uh, you're like in Star Wars, you know, you're Luke and Leah and you're in the junk, <laughs> the trash compactor, right? And the, and the, and the water's rising and the, and it's closing in on you. And, and you're trying to, you're trying to set parents free by exposing yeah, absolutely. this stuff. And, and, and tell us, so, tell us a little bit about up. And the one <laughs> out of the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. We grew no, up in the seventies. Like, Everyone knows. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like that. So we watch, we watch answers TV, right. And we saw yeah. your presentation at, you know, it was it answers for women. Yes. Uh, and yeah, it was one the, of the cult. The, 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 that figurine gender. that somebody gave you oh, yeah. of the, you know, the, the, the warrior and the, the sculpture. Yeah. The yeah. Sculpture. Mm-hmm. It was so cool. That's, and we, we watched that <laughs> and we said, yep, that's, that's what we feel like. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, it is. Yeah, as I, well, and that's how yeah. every married couple that's listening to this, that's how they should feel. 
Because yeah. God brings you together for a kingdom purpose. And you put, it's like, you're like the Wonder Twins, you know, like Wonder Twin Power, <laughs> activate, you know. Uh, that's that's what you're doing. I mean, you're both using the gifts and abilities that God has given you uh, to bring a message to a world that desperately needs to hear it. And now you guys are jumping into the transgender movement, which is straight up pure uh, evil. This is what this is. Oh, it's yeah. evil. Which why Beyond. the church is not why the church is not at the front of this I will never understand Mm-mm. I yeah. will never understand it so it's going to take people like you to have courage and you're going to when is this going to come out so now you're 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 documenting the transgender movement which I can only imagine <laughs> the the nightmares you're having now uh, what's the point of this one so we're well we're hoping that that one will come out uh, sometime next year so we're just getting ready to start fundraise fundraising for that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I think as as we've started already in the research phase for uh, for the film is called Dysphoria, and a, a, a saying comes to mind. I, I read a lot of a lot of books not related to graphic sex ed. <laughs> and as you, you were just, talking about, you just need a little Louis L'Amour. Just stick it in there. <laughs> <laughs> give, give give yourself a little a little break from the graphic sex ed. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. The, you know what you're saying of, about why you know why the churches haven't engaged in this. Uh, 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 something that comes to mind from a, a book about uh, self defense, and it and I'm paraphrasing, but it's basically said uh, when you stare long into the abyss, the abyss will certainly stare back. Mm-hmm. And when 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 you spend all of your time looking at the stuff and really researching mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And you know how it is. You just feel dirty. You I just know, feel awful. like you need to yeah. and you take a shower many times where you just got to yeah. step away and go, I got to get out. I, I got to take a few mm-hmm. days off. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's why the church doesn't, because, again, going back to where are the men? The men mm-hmm. are cowards and they don't want to they don't want to pick up a sword. They They want. And they so, want everybody to like them. Right. right. And society has told you that you need to be a coward and right. you need to be more feminine. Well, right. and come on. I mean, Mark, come on. Masculinity. <laughs> masculinity is toxic, right. dude. I'm actually. Well, I, I'm actually. Su- I'm. Yeah, right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised I'm able to be in your presence right now because it feels so toxic. Uh, even even for, and your beard. I mean, honestly, put it away. I, I, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm trying to understand how you're even on my show. So yeah. if if people want to help you, because I, what I'm hoping is one of the reasons I'm so excited to have you guys on here is I'm hoping to help you raise some money because I'm imagining, yeah. you know, I'm trying to run for Congress right now and it costs a gazillion dollars to do that. People yeah. need to engage. And part one of the ways that we engage is by funding people, helping them do the things that are going to change the country. The left is really good at this. Planned Parenthood is funding all kinds of garbage and all kinds of uh, Mm -hmm. of horrible stuff that's coming at our children. We need to start funding people like you who are going to get out there and and give a message of hope and healing and start opening the eyes of parents so that we can actually put a stop to this. And I actually think in our lifetime, we'll live to see it. How can people find you so they can start uh, funding what you're doing? Let's get you guys some money. Yeah, well, we would love, I mean, we are, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. And so Mm -hmm. everything that we do is donor funded. Uh, So if you visit fearlessfeatures.org, that's our ministry uh, website. And um, you can just go to the give page and that's how you can donate. Or you can um, text to give, text the word fearless to 80888 and you can give, get text message. Say it again. Okay, it's uh, fear. Uh, if you text the word fearless to 80888, you can give um, by text to give or uh, visit the website fearlessfeatures.org forward slash give and you can give there. And we also do that. right now through um, July 1st, we've had a uh, one of our donors has come through and they, they're they going to match dollar for dollar the first $20,000 um, that we get. So you know, if you give now through July 1st, your your dollar becomes two, <laughs> you know, 100 becomes that. 200. So I love that. So, yeah, so it it is important. I mean, it's people are p- people are really on fire and, and rising up. They see they see that others are waking up to what's happening. And it's it's encouraging. Well, we and believe. the battle lines have been drawn. So, yeah. Oh, Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. And Go ahead, Mark. Just going to say, I mean, we. We believe so firmly in this that to do the mind polluters <laughs> total step of faith, we refinanced our house to get mm. the seed money to start that film. Yeah. And, and now we'll regret it for a <laughs> oh. minute. 
don't re- I would do it again. I Ray, I'd prefer mm-hmm. not to. But right, right, right. I will right. do it again if I need to. So, <laughs> but that's but that's what it takes. I mean, that's that's part mm-hmm. of being. You know, a, you know. Someone said to me the other day that they have started tithing to my congressional uh, campaign. Mm-hmm. They're like, we, we, the Lord's been showing us that if we don't, if we don't start putting our money where our mouth is, it yeah. takes money to get this stuff done, and people don't mm-hmm. like that. But that's that's the reality of it. And you guys, you're not you're not taking that money and going to Tahiti. Who wants to do that anyway, right now? But. <laughs> Uh, you're not taking that money and vacationing with it. You're taking this money and God is going to use it in incredible ways. How can people bring uh, bring the mind polluters to their communities and watch it? I would love to see this played in churches. I'd love to see it. We're going to bring it here to the Homeschool Resource Center and yeah. uh, open it up for people to watch. How can people do that? So if you go to the website, you can go to themindpolluters.com and um, there's a a box to click and to just to contact us and let us know if you're a church, an organization, um, another ministry and out any kind of outreach where you can gather people. We've been working uh, and partnering with um, organizations all across the country for no licensing fee. You can have it. The only thing that we're asking people is that they take up a love offering so that it can help support our ministry. Because, you know, of course, we do need funded, too. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. but we need everybody to see it. I mean, no ticket sales, no licensing fee. People just need to come and gather. Yeah, I mean, I when we that. gather together, there's there's power in that. Yeah. You guys are, mm-hmm. are my new heroes in the filmmaking industry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kevin and Sam Sorbo and obviously uh, mm-hmm. Garrett Hampton and his wife, Yvette, yeah. Yeah. who have done yeah. Schoolhouse Rocked. These films are important and a Kirk Cameron mm-hmm. and they need to be seen and, and we need to host them. So uh, I'm going to link back to how people can get in touch with you to bring this film. And if, Great. is there a way easy for people to reach you that you could uh, say, or is it better for me to link back to it? Look at them. They're like, uh, we didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do you always have an, do you have an email. Yeah. I was going to say, you can uh, reach out to customer service at the Awesome. Customer service at themindpolluters.com. I hope mm-hmm. you guys are flooded and inundated. And I hope this, I hope this helps you get this film out yeah. all over uh, the we United would love States to see and around it all the world. Over. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it absolutely needs to happen. Uh, the battle lines have been drawn. The question is uh, very, very clear now for the church. Are we going to engage in the culture war? Or are we just going to give it away? And mm-hmm. I hope that we engage and I appreciate so much what you guys are doing. It's been a joy to have you on. Uh, let's do it again. And you can give me an update. I love to hear about how the movie dysphoria comes along. And uh, my husband and I'll be counting, counting among us for sure to be uh, helping you guys in any way that we can. And we'll be given to you as well. So thank you so much for coming Great. on the show. I appreciate it. Let's do it again. And you know what? You Great. can shave Thanks. the beard next time and I'll feel a little safer. <laughs> Okay, there, I Mark. Will not. I will not. <laughs> you won't comply. I love it. I will not comply. He, will, he will not. He will not. He will not It'll comply. It will be longer. Uh, <laughs> no, it won't. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Now we're going to get into the middle of a marriage. Mark and Amber. Mark and Amber Archer, it's just been a delight to have you. Uh, I'm just excited that you're here. Cannot wait to see what God does. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Heidi. Thank you. For more information on Mark and Amber Archer, you can go to fearlessfeatures.org. I hope you guys will go there, support what they're doing. It's more important now than it's ever been. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you back here tomorrow at the intersection of faith and culture.